everyone, welcome again, welcome back. Episode number 20, number 20, and it looks a bit different. And it's back to where we used to be about 12 weeks ago. That's right. So, studio area is the same. Indeed. We look a bit different though, because we Indeed. have to follow rules. Hello. Absolutely. Yep. So, we've been streaming from home for about two weeks, so we had a separation. Yep. I was home from my garage and you from your living room. So that's it. Yeah. And uh, it was exciting. It was. There were a few challenges. A few challenges. Internet dropping out a few times. Yes. Virtually every second time. Yes. But ultimately, we produced uh, a show for Pro Weeks, which uh, was uh, interesting at times. Yeah, so we hope everyone was entertained with that. They kept us busy. And uh, yeah, hopefully you get the, a little bit uh, of info out of that. But with this setup, Everything's going to be a lot clearer, isn't it? Absolutely. It's going to be interesting, a bit easier, yep. uh, a, bit, a bit more organized. Yep. Um, and so again, let's see who's coming online. Tony. Hi, Tony. Hello, Tony. Hello, Tony. Captain S-Man. So the usuals are back. Very yep. good. Hello. Fantastic to see everyone again. So we're trying again at 2 p.m. Uh, let's see if this works out. Yep. Otherwise, we'll, uh, we'll adjust the time as we go along, really. So yes. Let's get a few minutes as people come along. So we had a busy week, as you know, we reopened. Finally, that was so, exciting. So we reopened on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, and we had quite a few people coming through. Absolutely. Good to see um, some regular faces and some also regular faces. Yes, definitely. So we'll uh, we'll see how everything goes. Uh, so Tony suggesting the audio is not great. So um, yeah, I think he means as in it's a bit loud. So maybe we have to put the volume down a bit. Yeah, uh, I can probably do it from here. Let's see if I can. Oh, yeah, it's maxing out. So. Okay, so thank you, Tony. All right, a few. Okay. A few final adjustments. So we have to reset up everything because half of this stuff was moved after my place and the other half at BJ's place. So yep. we are resetting up everything. Yep. So hopefully the audio is better now. So quite a few things happening today. Yes. Um, obviously we had the results of the competition. Yep. The competition was really good. Body competition, body shell painting, which yep. is exciting. Um, talk about the Hearns workshop again. Mm -hmm. Finally, we can show you a few things a bit better, hopefully with the, yeah, with yep. the side camera. Yep. And then we will have uh, this, this a is selection, this mega is selection of product. This is what we were going to show everyone before we got into Absolutely. stage four lockdown. So looking forward to this. So it's going to be a showdown of uh, special stuff. special products that we currently have in store. So that's going to yeah. be fun. So okay, so let's get started. Actually, we have the usual car at the front here. Yep. So we just quickly pick it up so it's a bit easier to see. Can't show you too much. Otherwise, it's going to be too obvious. Yes. Okay, so that's the the quiz car for today. We'll just leave it there. So you can mull over that. So, great to see you. Got quite a few people live. So, uh, hopefully everyone is well. And we are live from Melbourne, CBD again, from the yes. shop, from the Hearn shop. Yep, that's right. And so, let's get started. So, let's talk about the competition. So, what happened with the competition, BJ? That was so, an exciting one. It was good. This is the, the biggest um, competition we've had so far with uh, the number of entries. We had a total of 28 entries. And um, that means the prize pool is $140, and they'll be split up between first, first. second, and third. Now, <clears throat> it was a two-week competition, um, and we had some really good entries. Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people wanted to get involved, and Absolutely. it was good, because there's a lot of people out there with all kinds of radio control cars, and when you see um, uh, the results we've got coming up, um, it, it was tough to pick. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we actually, we ended up with four judges. Yes. To try to make it um, fair. Well, it's always been fair. Always but, fair. Um, it's, uh, it gives uh, a lot more chance to be, uh, I guess, equal for everyone because everyone's got different tastes. In Absolutely. The so yeah, so we split up the uh, the four judges and at the end there was, again, there's only a few points a few between points. Uh, the winners. So how about we start by looking at some of the results? Yes. So. Oh. So let's go from uh, number three. Look at that! It's Look at Tony that. Gray. That is impressive, definitely. So, how, how many hours, Tony, to paint that? Uh, that would be many hours. That would be definitely many hours yeah. of work. So th this was very um, impressive, technically. There's a lot of work involved, a lot of freehand work. I mean, there's hand brushing and definitely. airbrushing freehand. Uh, a lot of masking, which isn't the easiest thing to do on this particular. Uh, model and it's a multi-piece body too as well. Yeah, so this is a BT design iron truck body That is actually mountable on any kind of touring car not only yes. on the Tamiya trucks But yeah. you can put this on an, on any kind of touring car. Yes, so that's a very impressive design You can see the engine engine details as well. So 
definitely love the work on this yeah one. for sure so I like the, like the design of the paintwork so it's got the yellow paintwork and you can see it's been peeled back revealing a uh, uh, a beaten up panelled underneath absolutely so if you jump on their Facebook page on their event page you can see all their work in progress photo on this, uh, yes. this uh, uh, body shells yeah. as well yeah very impressive you'll learn a lot absolutely yep. so moving okay. to second yep. are we ready so congratulations Tony so maybe he's going to change maybe not Right, here we go. Okay, okay, and congratulations, Tony. So different Tony, but it's a truck again. Um, Absolutely. This, this is um, it just pipped out um, third place by a couple of points. Uh, I get. I guess the most impressive part of this paint job is the flames. So the flames are all um, uh, freehand, freehand from airbrush, and you'll get a, a lot better appreciation when you see the work in progress photos. Absolutely. Just yep. the, definitely the jump on the layers. Facebook page and check out the work in progress because that was uh, that was a learning curve for me actually. It was yeah. very very interesting to see the, yeah. the progress actually on, on getting from the base color all the way yes. to the end result. Yes. Definitely impressive. Yeah. And, and it's really nice. It's a that's a bullhead, isn't it? Yes, that should be a bullhead. Yes. Yeah, 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 bullhead. yeah. bullhead. So a nice big model. So there would have been plenty of um, space to paint as well. Absolutely. Yep. So. Moving to the first one. So first place, drum roll. Here we go. When is going to change? Just a second. It's going to be slow today. It's a bit of a thinker. Not sure why it's not changing. Oh, it's, it's good. It's building up the suspense. Here we oh, go. There you go. Okay. So first place goes to Ben No uh, for his um, uh, Biddy Top Scale Agada body. Agada body. That was yeah. Brilliant, uh, brilliant design for a 112 liter Penka, uh, yeah, 12 scale. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very complicated uh, paint scheme. Uh, there's a lot of masking involved, and then there's also all the uh, the fading and other finer effects like the uh, spatter effects on the back of yeah. the car, and that and also that gray. It's, it's a, the paint scheme, the colors actually selection is uh, is very nice and yes, a nice taste is quite harmonic. So yeah. very nice, well done. Yeah, yeah. and it's got uh, I think the 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 lights were they painted as well i think um quite a lot of the grills and such were also painted so a lot of hard work involved in that one so congratulations to ben well done so yeah. fantastic competition yeah definitely i mean there were plenty of other really good ones too so you go on to the uh, event page and uh, look on the discussion tab and yes. then you'll be able to see all of the entries um and look at the work in progress too because they gave me some ideas always very helpful the work in progress photos absolutely so yeah so well done with that so we have to uh, think about another competition. Well, next, I guess we'll, next competition. Yeah, we'll announce that in the next, next week. Next week or so, we have a week break, and then we'll uh, we'll have a week to prepare, and then yeah. we'll start again. So within yep. the next couple of weeks, we'll have a new competition. So let's see if you've got any any questions, any comments here. So uh, yeah, thank you, Jeff. Jeff is uh, happy to hear that we are out of lockdown, which is great. Feels yeah, really good, good actually. Yep, Melbourne CBD feels a lot a lot. Um, more alive there was a week ago yeah there's, there's plenty more people walking around absolutely yes so good news so um that's for the competition so during lockdown we launched the Hearns workshop we did so some of you probably know already all about it but Hearns workshop is a new manufacturing division of Hearns uh which we started uh, a few weeks ago or a few months ago actually the idea started and yep. eventually we start the first few products uh, manufacturing the first few products recently yeah so it's been really exciting absolutely i'm gonna you've probably seen this one a few times yeah so let's see if it is uh site camera we can show you yeah so hopefully we've got set up now you'll be able to see a lot more detail so one of the advantages of uh of manufacturing the way we were doing it is we're able to offer a, a whole lot of different scales of the same subject yes. with almost the same detail so obviously the bigger the model the more detail you're going to see but as it scales down it does translate and um, an example would be the selfie girl because what you got here is there's a selfie girl in one twelve scale and the selfie girl in one to 32 30 second scale yep. yes so just last week we started a range of uh, slot car scale type products so we have yes. uh, uh, a couple of figures and we should be releasing uh, hopefully early next week so a set of uh, accessories yes which right. uh, which will be for garages and so forth and specifically these accessories will fit mm. very well also 24 scale uh, right. kind of diorama type uh, that's right
And even though they're um, aimed towards uh, 30 second scale slot cars, I mean, it, they'll work with anything 30 second scale. So if you're doing, say, a uh, more modern type uh, aircraft, they'll, they'll perfectly suit that. I say modern simply because of modern clothing. So there, there's a lot of uh, endless um, uh, opportunities to use them. And also the way that they're being designed and manufactured, it opens up um, any subject we like, Absolutely. really. And that's where um, uh, everyone's ideas really help us out because that's guided us basically to this point so far. Definitely. So at the moment we have a range of figures. So this will be a set for uh, uh, 172nd or so 187 actually specifically, but they will all fit uh, in a similar format, 72nd, yep. Yep. Uh, but also HR00 uh, scale type of uh, uh, railway scenarios. Yeah. So, uh, so that's our first set. And these are made up of all the individual figures we've had so far. And you may be able to see how the details actually translated to the small scale. So you can still see the faces very, very crisply. Um, all the folds in the clothing and all the individual straps for the, uh, the hand days and such that some of the ladies are, absolutely. are wearing. And this is our selfie lady, which is now only a few millimeter tall. Yeah. And so these are a range of figures that you see here. And uh, then we have some more uh, diorama that products yeah, this so is a brand new product from this week it is so we've um started work on this particular set here it's a miscellaneous set of 70 second scale stowage so uh by request uh it was to fill the back of a 70 second scale military truck um, but it's got pallets and uh drums uh big crates uh fuel uh, jerry cans, oh, jerry cans, jerry yeah. can, a couple of uh, other yeah, miscellaneous um, uh, tool containers and things, yep. little crates. So we've got that uh, available listed on the website now. So this one's a test piece. So the actual model is going to have a few extra bits. It's going to yes. have two extra pallets, pallets and two extra barrels on it and a few other bits in between. Absolutely. Yeah. So that, that's, that's all because of um, your help, letting us know what you like. Now, what uh, we're going to be working on as well is um, uh, we've got some uh, 350 scale figures that we're going to be working on for yep. all the ship modelers. They've requested those, which means once we do 1 to 350 scale, we'll be doing 1 to 200 scale as well. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, something we tested this week. Yep. Um, next one we should highlight are these little uh, sets here. Yeah. So these uh, are the detailing sets. Absolutely. So let's see if you can get it close enough. Okay. So these are, we've got rivets, we've got nuts and bolts, we've got pipes, we've got um, some cable guys as well. Yeah. And these are really good when you need to detail aircraft rather than, you know, any kind of military type vehicle. Yeah. Or, you know, scratch building kits or whatsoever. Right. Yeah, so we've used them on a bit of science fiction as well. Yes. Let me see. A good view. So again, this has been designed in house by Warwick. Uh, so lots of this product will be designed in-house and some other one will be um, designed uh, by other artists. Uh, and here we go. Yeah. So it's good. Um, we've been able to work with quite a few different, uh, I guess, series of models. Absolutely. So we've got the figures and the detailing items, of course. Yep. And then we've got items like the diorama accessories. Yes. Um, and we'll keep expanding upon that. So we have the HO, now we have yep. the Zot cars. And then we recently did the Ready Control accessories Ready control. as well. So this one, I believe, was a bit hard to see last week. So let's see if we can bring it better uh, this week. So we developed a, a snorkel, uh, an upgraded snorkel for the TRX4 Truxas rock crawler, yep. which will fit in the same position as the, as the uh, original one. Yep. It'll look a lot more detailed. Yep. We also have some um, uh, bonnet uh, air venting. Let me see if you can jump on this side. Yep. Okay, so this is your snorkel here. So we had a lot of details. This is first of all, uh, it's all open in here. So that's your venting. And as you can see, there's lots of more details and the bolts here. So, so there's going to be different heads available too, isn't it? There's three different heads. So uh, the, this uh, this more traditional head here, there is a Land Rover Ranger, uh, Land Rover type uh, kind of a pointy, pointy head pointy style one yep and there is what i call the mushroom one which would be more round and uh pointy upwards this yep. way but as you see this is gonna look a lot nicer once it's installed uh in your track here so yeah here we go and we have a range of uh bonnet uh air venting as well so this is installed on 
on this DRX4 and we've got a grill one and one with round, round holes actually let me see you can see yep. it better this way um, and they're quite easy to put on so absolutely when, when you get them they'll be in the grey colour yes and then uh, you just spray them the colour yeah, you like absolutely so the, uh, some of these do come with some uh, uh, with some supports which is part of the manufacturing process yep uh, you need to remove them and just give them a light sand yep the material is quite easy to sand so light uh, in 400 or even 800 uh, kind of grid sand. Yep. I've been using the Golden's uh, soft um, pads, yeah, little, little sticks. Yep. And yeah, they've been really good. Uh, as well as for this one, this comes with a few supports under here, which you need to remove them, give a light sand. It'll be ready to go very quickly. Yep. And then I use, I think, uh, semi gloss black for this one. Yep. Come up. That was just a Tamiya can spray it on. Tamiya can. Yep. Out in the rain. Out in the rain. Yeah, it's got a few oh. spots here. Oh, the other week was actually raining oh, before the previous live. Yes. So, um, yeah, so this is uh, for uh, the RC. We also done some, uh, you've probably seen it last week, the Hornet uh, adapters to yeah, turn adapters. Hornets and Frogs to 12 mil hex. hex. Yep. We're probably going to show it next week. We're going to probably prepare Hornet with some fancy wheels. Oh, we'll make something look really extreme. Absolutely. Yes. Do you have any suggestion on what wheels we should attempt to put in the Hornet? Let us know. Big as possible. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so. Some questions? Questions so or competition results are not in the link. They will be posted this afternoon. So yes. we just announced the winners live now, and we'll have the full uh, results probably this afternoon or early next week. Yep. Take a bit of time to type them in. Yep. Uh, and what else do we have for Hans Workshop? Uh, let me see. So we've got a, we've got a whole lot of things that we've just been experimenting with. I think just to make sure we get the uh, the product right. I was going to show you this. Um, I think the wheelbarrow is quite interesting. Yeah. So let's jump on this camera again. So that's a wheelbarrow that we are experimenting with. Uh, these are things that 30 feet, even bigger than 30 feet. That's uh, oh, that'll be probably 12 scale or something. Yeah, 16. it would be. Yeah, it's a larger version. It's a wheelbarrow that we're trying to develop. Uh, hopefully, it's going to end up into one of these uh, diorama sets. Uh, this is a street kind of construction sign. Again, we have this one in a set already, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and it does come in different scales, including uh, HO, I think, with yes. this one HO, which is quite nice on a train set type layout. And a couple of benches. So benches is something we designed to make them look as close as what we have in Australia, specifically with uh, keeping in mind that railway, uh, Australian railway set uh, don't have much uh, uh, product available no, that's to right. detail them. Yes. And so Warwick designed these two types of uh, of benches yeah so they're based on heritage type um, uh, Australian benches that we probably would have seen around a lot as kids so we've got uh, a lot of detail on them so they've got the wrought iron uh, frames and then the the timber cross uh, frames for the the seating themselves yeah absolutely there we go yeah nice so a lot coming uh, there's something happening this week was a bit slower because we had to reopen yep so we didn't have as much time as usual but definitely a lot happening so if you have any any questions let us know and we'll uh we'll try to create some sets for you yep that's right yeah cool let's put this aside put this aside yep see if there's any guesses yet on the cars how about i oh, 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 i won't show the front because it would be a giveaway yeah it would be all right so does this sort of help? I don't know if that sort of helps. Closer there. How about the underneath? All right. Put that back down there. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. All right. So next is this run through uh, exclusive products. Yes. So yeah. I think so, before so the lockdown, we were approaching the episode number 20 of our live. Yep. And we thought, let's go to the shop and pick some of the most exclusive and premium products that we currently have in stock. That's right. So we've got some special stuff that we've got in the store that um, aren't necessarily new um, or uh, things that are, uh, I guess we just take for granted sometimes because we're in the store every day. Absolutely. So I thought we'd go have a look and we'll find what are. Uh, the most premium things we've got here and we made a collection so we're going to show you those one by one and hopefully um, you'll find something that you like 
Absolutely. So where do we start? We've got a bit of everything from plastic kits to RC and yeah, we've got train stuff, collectibles. Yep. Tools. Tools. Where do yep. we start? Do we start from what's behind us? I guess. Yeah, Captain we'll Gundam. Cap Gundam. How about that? Okay. Okay. So this is a premium Bandai. Yes. This is the uh, Unicorn um, uh, Gundam Phoenix. Uh, narrative version. This is the fully gold plated version. So yes. it's got three different tones of um, gold plate. It's very rare, it's very um, uh, difficult to find at the moment. Yep. Um, I, I guess we should say that it's basically $560 just to give you an idea. So it probably doesn't look like much here, but this is very much a, a holy grail type kit. Very limited edition. Yes, that's It'll right. be a one off and uh, Probably won't be made ever again. No, that's right. So that's for Gundam. See, still yep. in the same uh, kind of genre to an extent. Yes. Got this mecha kit. Yep. So this is a Machine and Krieger uh, pack croat. So the pack croat is uh, one of the walkers with uh, the pack type uh, gun on it. So it's got the uh, the big uh, cannon you see here. Now this particular kit um, got released. Um, uh, it's probably six or so years ago and hasn't been reissued and then it was the original one that was reissued before so this is another holy grail kit um, the Kusta version of this is coming out shortly but it doesn't have the big gun on it's got the uh, uh, Gatling gun which is a different animal so here's another holy grail very rare kit that the collectors are, are looking for all around Absolutely. the world very unique so and that's again uh, six hundred dollars, five hundred nine. Yeah. So, small box. Small box. The premium kit. That's right. Holy Grail stuff. So. Okay, so very collectible. So there's a good chance that people that are looking for these will never build them, which very in a way is so. a bit of a shame. But that's the way that the collecting um, community works. That's why this one is fully wrapped in plastic to preserve the box as well. That's right. So. Keep it fresh. And this is part of our Ernst exclusive, so very rare. So you see some of these products are very hard to find. They're marked with a Ernst exclusive little. Holographic sticker. Yep. So okay. let's pack this here again. Yep. And we're gonna pull up big box. Oh okay. The big kit. Alright. There we go. Whoa, that's huge. Okay, so we got Solid. a bit more substance here. There's a big iron cog. So it's basically a big robotic gorilla. Goes out there, smashes everything to bits. It's got the big guns on the back, just you know, shoots everything to bits. Um, this is a similar sort of um, uh, price, it's a bit more. This one's close to eight hundred dollars, but you can Sort of see the value in this because you're going to end up with a really huge kit. Absolutely. They're very rarely produced, so they do reissue them from time to time. Um, but for the Zoids collectors, I mean, this is another Holy Grail kit uh, amongst the um, the Gorgeous, which is an even bigger kit, which how, we have had before. How big is this going to be? Oh, well, he's 30 centimeters, so he's going to oh, be big, like, big kit. Good. He's going to be so wide as well. Nice. Yeah, kit. so Iron Kong, the Zoids by Kota Bukia. Absolutely. All right. So, these are the the premium kits I guess we got. So, yes. what are we Should we move at? to this one since it's just in front of the camera? Yep. I think we showed this one to a live a few a few weeks back. Yep. Episode ten. Episode ten. Oh. Here we go. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> so, this is a twelve scale resin kit. We yep. should have weighted this. It's really heavy, actually. Yeah. So this is probably you know, the the top of the range of uh, of scale cars, you know. Definitely. Things. So with twelve scale, so twelve scale uh, allows for a lot of detail um, because if you don't add the detail in, it looks very very plain. But they've definitely added all the detail in these particular models. Absolutely. So BBR specialising in resin cast uh, models. They come factory assembled uh, with this um, uh, quality uh, Juco. And you see it's mirror finish. Uh, you probably be able to see all the reflections coming off it. Yeah through here um, you've got uh, various textures in the interior and all of the um, uh, instrument panel as well I so see we'll see if we can get a, a close-up of it uh, that's actually really heavy that's that's several kilos actually yeah so I move it this way here and see if you can get to so you probably get a better idea of the uh, how shiny and how well finished it is now the uh, windscreens are also made super thin so they look very scale and um, they don't give you that plastic distortion when you look through them. See, 
Yep. Old seats still have all detailing the seats. Yep. So they got the real leather looking finish. Um, this is the grill, the, the engine bay. Yep. And then the Ferrari badge that's just on top of the uh, engine bay. That's all photo etched. Yes. Metal. So it's very sharp. Also the, the prancing horse on the back. There you go. And let's move it to the front. There we go. That's your front here. So not only is it a really well made model, it's very rare because they only produce a fixed number of them. Now this one is number uh, number two of fifty. So only fifty worldwide of this particular I think we car. Park this one on the side here. Yep. So go. only fifty of those ever made. Yep. So one twelve scale BBR. Yep. Very very exclusive. So, so what sort of price is it? This is two thousand two hundred and fifty from memory. Big kit. So that's yeah, that's premium. So over the years we've been seeing few of those actually coming and going. Mm. It's not something we sell every day, but we have been definitely moving a few. Yeah. And uh, it's quite nice to see them coming differently. Yes. So I'm not sure what will be the next big one. I think I've uh, we've ordered a couple of large and future releases. So yep. we'll see what happens. Yep. Be good, good stuff. Okay, so, so we've got a bit of diecast. So we looked at some plastic kits. Look at some diecast. So what have we got here? So we've got go hands. That's a tool, that's a very special tool actually. So, you've probably seen a lot of videos of us talking about the benefits of these particular side cutters. So they're quite often called nippers now because in Japan they've been known as nippers. And these are single sided uh, cutters which cut like a scalpel. Absolutely. And um, you can't get any better than these for really sharp, clean cuts. So, there's side cutters there and they're just um, just under $100. Absolutely. Until you try them you don't, you don't kind of think they make the difference you know hundred dollars no. for a pair of side cutters is definitely yeah. uh, quite a lot but yes. once you actually have a go it, it's um, it makes a big difference you definitely. can cut a lot sharper a lot cleaner um, yeah. it, it feels very different so yeah definitely it speeds up your builds gives you a better um, finish overall absolutely yeah definitely yeah. so hundred dollars so for a side cutters made in Japan obviously so yeah really premium yep so they're good all right moving across so do we go trains Let's grab okay, a few trains. Here we go. So, uh, these are currently some of the most premium trains that we that we have in stock. So we go from a couple of different narrow gauges. That would be actually interesting to have a discussion about this. Yes. Let's open them up. Quite so like a narrow gauge. This is a narrow gauge from Buckman uh, Branch Line. So they started doing some narrow gauge models in in the last couple of years. Yep. So this is 00, 009, yep. which is very much and So 00 being the scale of it, which is um, uh, 1 to 76, and then 9 being 9 millimeter track width, which is which N scale. N scale. So that's the combination between N scale and uh, 00. And on this side, we have another narrow gauge, which is a very popular train. That's a bigger narrow gauge. It's a bigger narrow gauge, so that's the next size up. That's, uh, I think this is, uh, that's O. O, yeah, it's an O scale uh, locomotive on double uh, O H O gauge truck, effectively. There we go. So, this is the puffing billy. That is the puffing billy indeed. Yep. So, this particular one's available in different colors. So and it's been very, very popular. So, puffing billy. So, as you see, Different so, narrow gauge, a so very unusual, a bit more unusual type of scale that give you the ability of uh, of modeling bigger, the biggest scale in a smaller space, effectively. Yeah. So in the N scale layout, you can use you know H O or double O type kind of building and and scenery, so you have a bit more uh, detail. Yep. And that in that case, on a kind of H O double O space, you can do an L scale kind of railway set. Yeah, and often the, 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 the locomotive have a much bigger, better level of detail. Obviously. Yeah, that's right. So you've got the uh, well, the, the cables and the lines much finer, and then the whistle itself has a lot more um, fine detail as well. Absolutely. So this one has got uh, DCC and sound as well. So that will be uh, that's the top of the range. So they managed to squeeze in this small uh, unit uh, a DCC decoder with the sound and speakers as well so you can feel it's got a bit more weight as well that's impressive uh, and that's definitely impressive absolutely so it will uh, it will uh, uh, produce some sound so on this side that's traditional double O that's a very large long uh, 
locomotive. Yeah, so this is an HO diesel. Yes. Let's just quickly find where it's up on the side. Here. here we go. Now this is also sound equipped. So again, it's uh, it's becoming a lot more popular uh, having sound uh, sound locomotives. Uh, in the past, you had to install them. It was pretty complicated because mm. you, you need to pull everything apart but you need to find a space for the speakers yes which is not always an easy thing to do and you know you need to modify the chassis and there's a bit of cutting and and chopping which that's right you know on a four five hundred dollar locomotive is always that may not feel right yes but now some of those those do come ready to go yeah and it's impressive how the the sound quality of them is so much better absolutely so maybe in the next few few weeks we should do in the live uh sound um, show, show the some of the sound. Oh, should do, yeah, I because I do have a lot of different sounds pre programmed into them. Absolutely. So, yeah. I think we tried before. Do you remember? Yeah. We tried yeah, to yeah. show the DCC, and the first shot didn't work too well. Yeah, but yeah that failed, but, um, but the second one was better. So, yes. uh, any sound of the premium trains that go from the four to five hundred dollar mark, yes, and uh, of different scales as well. So, very nice, very good. Um, we had a we had Tony guess about the car, car. In front. Oh yes, okay. he thinks it's a Ford Falcon. It is a Ford Falcon, okay. but which one is it? Which one is it? Because Falcons run many oh, yes. many years. There's a few different this versions. Was, this was pretty specific. It is quite famous though, so you probably ought to be able to work out what it is. A few little details that will help Give you. Give it away. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Could be. Let's see. So let's park these aside for a second. It takes a little bit to put them back together, I think. Okay, where are we? Very well packaged too. Very well packaged, absolutely. For transportation, they have to be well packaged, otherwise they will they may break. So we can let's see. Let's in here. Okay. Alright. Yep, that's all good. Uh, this goes the other way. So what's next? What do we have next? What do we got next? Um, we got a, a big RC truck. We got a big RC truck. I think it's time for the big RC truck then. Big RC truck. Let's put this away. <clears throat> so Tami RC trucks. So this year we haven't received too many unfortunately. It's a bit of a shortage on uh, on Tamiya supply. Yeah, it's just the part of the production. I, I guess um, uh, they're slowing down a lot of the production from a lot of manufacturers. Absolutely. So unfortunately with um, our favorite uh, vintage cars from Tamiya, uh, it's, it's going to be a slow year. Uh, but a few things are going to come through. So this is a uh, uh, big Mercedes-Benz Actros. So a very typical European style short nose. Yes. So what do we know about trucks? Trucks are, again, a big, big project. They're big. So. When they started bringing these out, they already had all the one tenth scale things out, and then I guess if they decided to make this one tenth scale, then it would have been absolutely too huge. So they've gone for one fourteenth scale, yes. which is a bit more of a manageable size, particularly when you've got the uh, the trailers attached absolutely. to them as well. So you could quite easily just buy additional trailers and fit them on. Uh, you've got a lot of options as well. You can get sound units, multifunction units. So it's got uh, indicator lights, headlights that you can control from your radio control, um, and they've got the same sort of building. Uh, system as all their traditional ready control cars so they're all screwed together up snap yeah. together uh, a little bit more work in the body because the bodies are more detailed yes. so that's sort of like a, a transition between ready control and scale model building there's a lot of work you can do to make the body look really impressive yes there's lots of upgrade kits as well for the body um, so quite a bit of work that can go in there but also on the mechanical side there is a bit more compared to a traditional uh, say Hornet or whatsoever because you have yes. a gearbox. Those yes. come with a pretty comprehensive, pretty complex gearbox. So you've got and, yes. a few gears yes. and the reverse as well, correct? Yes. So, so the gearbox has gone a long way. So they first released the gearboxes in the 80s. They came out on the uh, Bruiser type four-wheel drive truck. Yep. And then on, the, on these trucks they've um, uh, simplified them and made them smoother. So you can actually change gears while it's actually moving. moving. That's really impressive. And, and as BJ was saying, the range of trailers and accessories it's endless. You have tankers, you have containers, you have yep. flatbeds. Yep. But it's a bit of everything, really. Hmm. And uh, there's some clubs out there, actually, if you're interested. There's some clubs. You've, you probably find them mostly on Facebook. They do some 
meets and some events where they all catch up together and have some missions. Yep, I think there's a club in uh, in Melbourne. Yes, yep, definitely. I, um, I think it's RC Truckers or something. Mm. One of those. But definitely look it up. It's uh, even on YouTube. You find some really exciting videos actually. Yep, uh, definitely worth a look. Big uh, big truck. Big truck. So staying in the RC, I think we have a. A nice radio here, which uh, came back in stock just recently. Oh, that's right, yes. So we had a quick look at one of these. Um, we did, a, did, did we a do a review? Oh, we did a bit of a yes. live in a, probably one of the 17 or 18 episodes or something. We yep. uh, the 7PX and the Sunwa M17. Ah, uh, the comparison. A bit of a shootout on top of the range radio. So yes. this is a fantastic computerized radio. So that's, uh, that's what we use today. When we race RC cars. Yep. So I guess the biggest uh, differences with the more modern radios is there's the more channels that they offer. So if you're doing unusual models, you have extra channels for controlling, say, for, in for instance, the truck where it changes gears, um, or you may have other things where it operates another function and you can also mix those functions together. So say at a particular speed, you want to wing the change, you can do that as well. Absolutely. So very nice, very good feel. There's lots mm. of, uh, you know, option to, you know, uh, customize all your buttons so when you're driving you can have timers you can have uh, you can adjust your dual rates or your, your exponential so th yep. th there is a lot that goes into this radio so um, if you're racing then you can you know you can fine tune it as you go uh, and that is a from memory $850 radio so definitely top of the range premium radio yep um, you can also change the wheels actually. Now you can change the wheels, so you can have a uh, different position for your wheel. Oh, so yes, you hold the radio. Right. Yes. For some, maybe it'd be more convenient to have a bit of an angle on, on the wheel yeah. or slightly yep. bigger or so smaller a, wheel. Yep, and the and the drop down. And the drop down wheel. Quite popular yeah, a number of years ago. Absolutely. Also, the trigger, uh, you normally have a few adjustments on the trigger to make sure that it fits your, your, your finger quite well. Yep. So you don't have so too much um, play yeah. in it. Yeah, so thin fingers and, uh, and thicker fingers. Thicker fingers. It can be all be customized. Absolutely. So, Futaba, mm. again, another Japanese brand. Yes. Uh, been yeah, around for a long very time. long time. Absolutely. So, still on top for, uh, as for radio for RC cars, but also mm. for planes. It does some big, you know, 1830 channel radios yes. for uh, large aircraft. So, yeah, definitely worth a look. So, if you jump back through some of our previous lives, you will uh, you will find a bit, of a bit of an in-depth review of this one or a bit more of a discussion. Mm. Good. Okay. All right. So, how we go with the uh, the guessing on the uh, on the car? Mm, not much else lately, but we do no? have a nice hello from North Latitude from Ontario, Canada. Canada. Wow. Fantastic. Hello. Welcome, hello, Canada. Thank you for joining us. Hello from Melbourne, Australia. Indeed. <laughs> it's almost the uh, opposite sides of the world, isn't it? Oh, uh, he said he's, uh, he was watching your review on the Titanic, the gigantic Titanic. Oh yeah, it's massive, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah, that is huge. That's, that's just like, that's like it's a big that's, box. That's, yeah, it's a big box. Yeah, a lot like of work. Five I guess uh, yeah. there was a photo on uh, on Facebook recently on this Titanic that was on a Fiat 500. Was it a Fiat 500? Oh, it was. It was actually wider than the car. Yeah, that's right. A little Bambino. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, very good. So, let's see if you can have a bit more of a guess on this car. So, have you established as a Ford Falcon? Very famous Aussie car. Absolutely. So. This just came in stock recently, so that's a 118 scale. Yeah, unusual Diecast. color. It's very unusual color. It's, uh, yeah, I think you can see in camera, it's a nice, nice color. Ooh, there go. GTHO. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right, I'll give you that one. So it's GTHO, but which GTHO is it? So here you go. There were two famous types. Absolutely. And after you heard that, it should be pretty easy. You look for obvious difference, you'll be able to see that. Let's see if we put. <laughs> Yeah, a bit more this way. Yeah, yeah. You may be able. The, the color's a bit tricky. The color is definitely tricky. Probably yeah. on camera is very hard to pick it too. Yeah, because it's, it's uh, sort of olivey. Yes, yeah, it's, it's got a metallic finish to it. Definitely. Yeah, and the name is also interesting. Yes. <laughs> Rob, welcome. Rob is coming online. Hello, Rob. Once again, we've been back to the usual two p.m. Uh, for the live. But if you guys are suggesting different times, well, uh, we're happy to move around. We know the life has been different in the last seven months very well you know yep. we used to be in the office at this time of the day now most of us are are, uh, are at home mm. so we'll, uh, we'll have to find a good time that fits everyone kind of uh, new schedule yeah but I guess you can rewatch it afterwards and yeah. go back and watch the previous uh, the previous episodes as well yeah so I think we're towards the end of our 
run of products. I think the Steam Engine, I think, is uh, is the last of uh, oh yes the mega products for this week. This is a bit special. Very special. Very old old school. So made in German. So it's a German product. Yep. Lesco. Been manufacturing steam engine, functional steam engine for a very long time. Yeah, it's about a hundred years old, I think. Hundred years, wow. There's not many companies left in the world making this type of product. I think no. uh, it's a mammoth in uh, in the UK. Not even sure they're still making them. Yeah, they've they've gone a lot smaller now. So I think they're still around, but yeah. not as big as they used to. But uh, the Walesco stuff is uh, is reasonably common. We, yeah. we try to carry their full range. This is one of their bigger sets. So this is the D24. You can see how huge the boiler is. So boiler just there. Uh, we haven't got the funnel, but the funnel would sand up to about here. Yep. And then you've got a, um, a pressure control at the front too, which makes yep. it a bit more special. Definitely. So steam comes out, powers up this this huge um, cylinder and uh, uh, piston arrangement, and then it drives a flywheel. And you just hear over here, there's a the torque governor. It's just spinning. And then from there you can drive um, other accessories. So they make a whole range of different of things. Different figures yeah. and things that you can move. And yeah, so carousel. Yeah. Yep. There's a lady exactly. washing her clothes. It's a guy cutting, cutting, wood. cutting wood and yep. all kind of different things. So. Hammer, hammer guy. Very yep. interesting. So again, jump on YouTube. You can search for Steam Engine. There's some really impressive kind of um, dioramas in a sense, really. Yes. The figures are a bit more basic because they tend to be a bit more 2D yep. sometimes, but definitely but, but they're, they're very much of a, a particular era because yeah. the whole look of these hasn't changed in mm. many many decades absolutely so even the accessories have that very traditional Feel. stamped tin, yeah. tin look absolutely so and that's the d24 from Wilesco which yep. uh, retails for over a thousand dollars yes very nice indeed but it's nice a big indeed. unit yes so all right so let's sell our premium range of stuff there's a bit of a rundown of what's uh, very exciting and yeah. somehow a bit more unusual we're very used to see the traditional airfix and tamiya kits yes and you know steam engine is not something we we play every day and uh a big die cast or collectible cars again yes not something everyone gets to see every day so we thought it would be a good idea to yeah, for sure a bit of a range it's a bit of a thrill for us too because we get to show off the stuff that we really like yes absolutely yeah. absolutely so well else we received a few things this week actually <laughs> uh, you see a few a few kits, something yep. exciting up there. Yeah, and, and just well, pop this back. While you guys are sorting that out, uh, Tony made a guess of is it possibly the XY? Is that the XY? No, uh, it's not the XY, and that should so, make it easier. So now. It must be the other one then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just going to enter some restocks. So we've got some trumpeter in the uh, uh, last week. Now this is the uh, Bismarck and 1350 scale. Yeah, it's one of the uh, quite new kits, and the, the last time we had them in, they sold out very in fast. no time. Yeah. So Tamir's had Bismarck for a very long time, but the Bismarck kit's about 30 years old, so it's looking a bit dated. This one is definitely much cleaner. Yes. And it comes with all the photo which included already. So that's something that's that's really nice. Fairly big kit. Definitely. And yep. so we're going to have a, a probably our first run of. Uh, Little 350 scale figures could perfectly That's end up right. in there. Yep. So, so we've already been experimenting with a, a 350 scale figure. Figures. Had a closer look at it, and it's it looks really good. Really good. Impressive. So, so much better than any of the photo wedge figures you've seen because yeah. they're just flat. They're just like cardboard cutouts. These are the 3D, so they've got a good good shape. You can still yep. see a very good level of details, and you can define the hands and face and yes, yeah. and, and the caps, and caps and, and all that. So yep. uh, that will come up very soon. Yep. And this yeah. one, very exciting on this one. Yes. So this has been a long time coming. Yes. So these were actually anticipated for last year, yep. same time. And these were meant to be released for the uh, opening of the movie uh, Ford versus Ferrari. So this is the GD40 Mark II uh, that won Le Mans. Now, initially this was a trumpeter kit, but it looks as though they had issues with licensing. Licensing. So they've Come, it's coming out as a different brand name, although it comes out of the same factory. Yep. And they've simplified the name of it. Yes. Which is just what is it? U.S. racing car. Yes. U.S. sports car. Sports car something. So, yeah. I mean, it's quite obvious when you look at the what picture. What it is? Absolutely. Yep. It's a GD40. And it's a 112 scale GD40. Lots of that size at the end. That's right. So really beautiful kit. So if you've seen the earlier kit, it's got the same bits. It's got all the um, uh, photo witch, but yep. it appears to have some pre-painted parts as well. So the gearbox uh, is semi-coloured. Um, and it's got all the opening doors 
opening um, uh, bonnet. Uh, so you see the spare tire inside. Wow. Why they had a spare tire in? Oh, I'm not too sure. Back to the month. I mean, what are you, what are you no, telling me? You're going to really stop halfway to change yeah, the tires, would you? Open up the hood and change the tire. No. No. But um, yeah, and all the engine detail. So that's really nice. So that's nice something, something uh, to look forward to. Absolutely. Right, so, so some of the new things. I think we're coming towards the end. Something new that we received uh, this week actually is this fuel gun. I think it'll be interesting to have a quick discussion about fuel guns. Good old fuel guns. Yes, I've had a, a bit of experience with fuel guns. I had some experience with a fuel gun. I remember getting quite sticky every time. Sticky? They tend to leak a little bit. Yeah. But I think this stuff that is being produced these days, it's, uh, it's a lot better. Yep. And even faster again. Yeah. So if you don't know what a fuel gun is, so in uh, ready control car racing, so particularly uh, fuel powered cars, uh, when you get into the finals of a big race, they're normally um, held over a longer time period. So club racing might be a half hour final, but uh, full on racing like uh, national and international level, it's a one hour final. Yes. Which means you need to refuel um, every uh, 10 so minutes. Eight or so. 10 minutes, yeah. So obviously you need to bring the car in yep. and you want to change your fuel as quickly as possible, just like the, the real F1 teams and such. And so in the past you use a bottle and you had to squeeze really, really hard and the fuel just goes everywhere. Um, so someone uh, really clever designed a fuel gun. A fuel gun. So the idea of the fuel gun is it's very high capacity. It's got a very large opening. So the opening is the same size as the fuel tank. The fuel tap. Yeah. Which means as soon as you open it, gravity just, just straight drops in. it all in. And the other clever thing too is it's got tubes which go all the way to the bottom. So you have that about the top of your fuel tank. And as soon as the fuel drops in, when the, the level goes up to the top, it automatically stops. Stops. So yeah. you're so guaranteed you that the tank is full because when yes. you spray with a squash the, the fuel bottle, yes. you never know if it's full because it's bubbling up and you're yes. rushing it. So half the yeah, time, you know, right. there is a risk that you only fill up half the tank. Yes. And that, that it's very important you fill up in full because normally you tend to run your pit stop based on your, um, you know, you time your, your, your engine, you know that your engine is going to go for eight minutes and 50 seconds and yes. or nine minutes and 30. So it's very important it's full because, yes. you know, a few milliliters of fuel make the difference between doing, being able to do an extra lap or having to pit. Yeah, that's so, right. This is fantastic. Normally, the yep. two pitmans, one grabs the car, yep. and the other one just jams the uh, fuel gun on the tank, yeah. pulls, and within a normally a second or so, is, yeah. is, is a flash sort of full. So this particular shape is um, a reasonably new idea yes. too. So the, the earlier ones used to have a, an actual handle, so they actually yep. used to look like a gun, like yep. this, and used to use it like this. But these particular ones are upright without the handle, so you hold it like this, and then you squeeze, and then it drops the fuel in. So it feels a bit more natural to drop it in like this, yep. squeeze and let it go. Um, and then so it's very easy to get into it as well. So it just refuels out the back. Absolutely. Um, and you can up see the opening up yeah. in the valve. A little valve there that pulls up the bottom. And that's from Aramax. So Aramax is, uh, is releasing quite a few new products actually recently and this arrived just this week. Yep. And uh, very, very exciting. It makes me want to go race Nitro again. Oh, Nitro, yeah, it's good. It's good racing, Nitro. Absolutely. Long finals, Absolutely. it's exciting. The original fuel guns were quite leaky, and yeah, fuel leaking from everywhere, and well, my first, a bit messy, but... My first fuel gun was an aluminium one, so you couldn't even see how much was in there. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oops, not enough. <laughs> so, very interesting. So, we finally have an XW. XW, well, yeah. Well, well done. done. Well done, Tony. Yep. So, we've got an XW. Metallic color. Yep. Let's see if we can guess the name. The name is going to be a tricky one. Yep, yep. So this is a brand new release from Classic Collectibles. Actually, mm. that, that may help. Yep. They arrived last week. Yep. And uh, it's part yeah. of their premium range too. So this has got all the, all the opening bits and pieces. So yeah, all the doors big. open up. Boot mm. opens up. The boot. Yep. And I think let's see if you can open the bonnet here. Here we go. Yep. Got doors and all that. Yeah. Very good. So I think we're coming towards the end of our uh, live number 20. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's so it. 20 in the shop and 12 from home. So <laughs> it's been good. I guess the other advantage we have being here is um, our interaction is much quicker. But then if there's anything you guys want us to Absolutely. bring out, just let me know. I'll run out there, grab it, bring it back. Well, for a matter of fact, we actually just received a, our new oh. Nine Steps uh, Essential Site Cutter. Oh, there you go. So that's just arrived a minute ago, and uh, Warwick was kind enough to bring them to us. And so that extends the range of the nine step. Um, 
So this is the kind of more entry level type uh, uh, Cyclados. If you're just uh, you know beginning to do oh. models, this is uh, this is a very good uh, uh, option for you. You've had some people just come in too. Uh, I can see Nick. Nick is back. Nick. 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 He's Nick. liking the time too. He's saying two o'clock is a lot more reasonable. Oh, uh, is it? <laughs> yeah, Nick. Nick used to go to sleep when, when oh, we started no, live. No, 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 okay, it's a bit time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good. Well, that's good. That's good feedback. And I think Tony is a bit onto a winner with regards to the the color of the car. Oh, really? Yeah. He's saying it's a little bit fishy. It's a bit fishy. 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 Yeah. <laughs> is it? Is it fishy? I can't remember now. It's not. It's not fishy. It's, <laughs> it could be. <laughs> it, it's an interesting color for sure. And uh, Nick's also asking if there's any new kits. Uh, Nick arrived five minutes too late, unfortunately. <laughs> when are you going to come and see us? <laughs> so we have the GT40 from well, kind of trumpeter really. Yeah, it's called magnifier, but it's magnifier trumpeter from, from trumpeter. The Bismarck. Yeah, that's back in stock. Here you go, Nick. That's a Bismarck here. That's a good project for you. And then we've got Copper State Models new um, kit turning up in the next few days yes so they've got a new uh, World War One uh, uh, armored so car we we'll see if you had a trumpeter kits and uh, oh, I've got a lot Academy Academy yep. quite a bit there's a lot there's a lot that are arriving in the last uh, in the last week or so and there's a bit more arriving next week yeah a couple of steps as you said yeah that's right so I think a few we, things we're pretty loaded up with stock at the moment which is really great so I might be uh, it might be a better idea for me to take some photos of the shelves themselves and post those up it'll give Absolutely. a better idea of um, what we have rather than just showing little Good tidbits idea. Mm. Good, yes. So some of you here, I see the names, they're actually uh, away from Melbourne, so you cannot physically come into Melbourne yep. still for the next, uh, for the next, oh, I don't know, hopefully, till next week, I think, still. Yeah, it's in November, isn't it? November, hopefully, that, November, uh, we, we so all become one. Hopefully, we can see some of you coming again. down in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, I'll also add that um, the, same, uh, the same person from Canada, yes. Pete Keenan. They want to thank both of you, particularly you, BJ, for your trumpeter review. He said it's because of you yes. that he bought himself one. Very good. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Thank I'm you for watching it. it. Yeah, I'm glad it helped. So well, I did go through every little bit of it, so you get you get a better idea even through the, the manual to to get um, some insight because quite a lot of the time those big kits, even though there's a big hype behind them, well, quite often you can't find much info. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So. As we're going a bit more back to normal, we should start producing a few more reviews. Yes. And uh, keep it on our YouTube channel. We have a few videos coming up on uh, on the, some of the kits we received last week, some uh, Yoshima and uh, else we have prepared. We've got quite a few kits that we, we're preparing some reviews. Yes. So there'll be new things coming soon. And what else do we have here? I think that's all for today, pretty much. Did we want to announce what the final color was? Oh, the color. <laughs> Do you know the colour? Actually, I don't know the colour. That was a trick question. I don't know the colour. I was hoping someone was going to tell us. We uh, believe is... Uh, I reckon it's... I reckon, it, I reckon it's fishy, fishy green. Fishy green. That's good. Fishy, fishy green, green I, I've got the colour here on uh, from our website if you want me to tell. Yeah, yeah let's wait. go for it. Is, it. is it fishy green? No, no. Rob got it. What is it? Reef. Reef green. Reef green. Well, that's close enough. Fishy. Fishy. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, Excellent. <laughs> Well, so Tony had it really. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Basically, yeah. well done. Yeah, good stuff. Very good. Okay then. So, if right. there's not any more, any other questions? Um, we'll uh, we'll uh, close the live. Yes. To number twenty. So make sure you follow us throughout the week on our uh, social media. Let us know what you would like to see on the following live. Yes. We'll make sure to bring it. Yep. And uh, uh, let us know what competition you'd like to have for next time around as well. Yeah, so give us yeah. ideas. So the competition. Always looking for ideas because I think we've Absolutely. done most of the majors. Yes. Um, we uh, we could revisit them as well, but it would be nice if we can just sort of change it up a bit. Something different. Yeah. Absolutely. So. And then also the Hearns Workshop stuff. If we can get some more ideas there too, that always helps us as well. Definitely. So, absolutely. So, feel free to comment. We've got a few posts going out every day. Yep. If you find something interesting and you would like to know more, we're more than happy to bring it on the live and uh, give it more a close up, I suppose. Yep. For sure. Very good. All right. All right. So, Thanks you have a good weekend. Thanks for joining us again. Good to see you and good to be back. Bye. See you, see you next, next time. Bye-bye.